Hi, my name is Amber Terhune. I'm the health educator for the Johnson County Health Department. In this presentation, I'm going to discuss preparing for disasters. First, you should make a plan. Know the disaster types that are likely to happen in your community. Find out if any neighbors have any special equipment, such as a generator, or any expertise, such as being a doctor. Consider taking preparedness and or first aid classes. Consider specific family needs. Create a family emergency communication and reunification plan. Create supply kits that are ready to go and take with you. Share the information with your household members. Give each person a copy of the plan to carry with them. Enter everyone's contact information into cellular phones and create a group list. Make one contact labeled ICE or in case of emergency. Have an out-of-town emergency contact and give them a copy of the plan. Keep a copy of the plan in the central home location, such as the refrigerator. Practice the plan. Texting, calling, and emailing, making sure everyone knows how to, as well as knowing how to dial 911. Discuss the information to be sent in the text and the email, such as where and how you are. Practice exiting rooms through standard and alternate means. Practice gathering in emergency places, including transportation and the routes. Memorize everyone's numbers if possible. Review and update your plan at least annually or more often if there are changes to be made. Here is an example of a family communication plan. Be sure to collect contact information for all household members, including their phone number and email. Collect information on schools, child care centers, caregivers, work, and church, including their phone numbers and social media sites. Also, know their facility emergency plans. Collect information on an out-of-town emergency contact, including their name, phone numbers, email, and address. Collect information on meeting places, and be sure to have a safe, familiar place that is accessible to all, including pets if you have them. Have a place set for an indoor room or shelter at home, such as an interior room, storm shelter, or a safe room. Have another place that is in the neighborhood, such as a neighbor's house or a tree. Another meeting place should be outside of the neighborhood, such as a library, church, or friend's home. You may also have a meeting place out of town, such as at a family or friend's house. Other information to collect, including the name and contact information, is for utilities, emergency services, medical, dental, pharmacy and vet providers, insurance companies, service providers, including social providers and home repair, and the homeowners association. Also have an exit escape plan with at least two exits per room. Here are some communication tips in case of an emergency. Texting is best. Phones can cause network congestion. You may use the phone only in an emergency, but keep it brief. You may also post information to social media sites or send email. You may use pay phones if they are available. They typically do not rely on electricity or mobile networks. Use a cell phone battery conservation technique, such as reducing the screen brightness, closing any unnecessary apps, and limiting video and game usage. Make sure you have a car charger, and make sure your car is in a well-ventilated area to prevent carbon monoxide poisoning. Maintain a household landline in case of a power outage. You may forward your home calls to a cell phone if you are evacuating. Create portable supply kits for home, work, and for the vehicle. Be sure to have at least three days worth of food and water. Store food items in airtight plastic bags and easy to carry containers. Here is a list of some basic emergency supplies. You may also consider non-prescription medications, baby wipes, diaper rash cream, utility knives, toilet paper, contact lens solution, and a rope for rescuing. Be sure to avoid food and drinks that can cause dehydration. Any water that you bottle yourself should be replaced every six months. Some additional considerations for your vehicle are extra supplies such as jumper cables, flares or reflective triangles, a brightly colored cloth to tie to the antenna, ice scrapers, car cell chargers, and kitty litter or sand for traction. Some vehicle preparation includes checking antifreeze levels, the battery and ignition system, brakes, exhaust system, fuel and air filters, heater and defroster, lights and the flashing lights, oil, thermostat, windshield wiper fluid, 
and make sure you have greater than or equal to half tank gas. Be sure to maintain your kit. Keep your food in a cool, dry place and replace any expired items. Discard any contaminated or possibly contaminated food items. Update your kit with family need changes, such as dietary needs and age-related needs. Be sure to protect your documents and valuables. Collect information, such as household records, birth, marriage, divorce, adoption, or custody papers, and identification, such as passport, driver's license, social security card, green card, military ID, and pet information, including your ownership papers and ID tags. Also have your financial and legal documents, housing documents such as lease, rental, mortgage, home equity loan, line of credit, or deed paperwork, vehicle documents including loan documents, the VIN number, registration, and title, any account information such as checking, savings, debit cards, credit cards, retirement or investment funds, insurance documents such as homeowner's insurance, renter's insurance, automobile, life, flood, appraisals, photos, and any lists of valuables. Documents of any income sources, including pay stubs, government benefits, alimony, and child support. Tax statements, such as federal or state returns, property tax, and vehicle tax. Estate planning paperwork, such as wills, trusts, and power of attorney. And other documents, including utilities, student loans, elder care, memberships, and cell phones. Be sure to collect medical information such as health insurance, dental insurance, vision insurance, any Medicaid or Medicare or VA benefit information, legal documents including a living will, DNR, and medical power of attorney, current and past medical history including current medications, immunization records, allergies, prescriptions, any medical equipment and chronic conditions, any disability documentation, any caregiver agency forms, such as, such as a contract or service agreement, and medical contact information, including doctors, dentists, vets, and pharmacy. Be sure to collect information on your valuables, including priceless mementos, such as family photos and keepsakes, and have a list of monetary value possessions, such as jewelry, art, and collectibles. Protect your belongings. Paper copies of documents may be put into fireproof and waterproof boxes or safes, in a safe deposit box, or entrusted to a family member. You could also have electronic copies of documents that are password protected on a flash drive or external hard drive. Document your valuables with pictures, videos, descriptions, appraisals, or purchase receipts. As for your valuables, make sure to store them out of moist areas, such as out of the basement and store them securely, not necessarily on upper shelves, or they may be stored in a safe. Know it is covered by your insurance and make sure you have enough coverage for your dwelling, personal property, liability, replacement, damages, and disasters. Be aware of alerts and warnings. You may have notification systems through the Integrated Public Alert and Warning System, or IPAWS. There may be news alert banners through the Emergency Alert System, or EAS, such as through cable, satellite, and digital audio, cell phone alerts from the Wireless Emergency Alerts, or WEA. There's no charge for this, and you don't need to opt in. There may also be digital road signs with information. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, has radio broadcasts with weather alerts and emergency alerts 24-7. There may also be local public alerts, such as outdoor sirens, the enhanced telephone notification with reverse 911, and there may be local texts and emails that you may have to opt in. Some apps include FEMA, which has weather alerts, open shelters, map, and safety suggestions, the American Red Cross, which has weather and emergency alert alerts, safety suggestions, and notifications for the family, and the Weather Channel, which will have weather alerts. Be prepared for shelter and evacuation. Plan how and where to go before an emergency. Include meeting places, routes to get there, and transportation options. You may have to shelter in place, such as at home, work, school, or a vehicle. If you have to shelter in place, lock your doors, close windows, close air vents, and close fireplace dampers. 
turn off fans, air conditioning, and heating systems. Bring pets and household members to an interior room. Seal windows, doors, and vents in a room with 2 to 4 mil plastic sheeting and duct tape. If you have to go somewhere else, take a supply kit with you, as there may not be enough supplies at the shelter. Alcohol, drugs, and weapons are prohibited, and the shelter may not accept pets, so be sure to find a place that will accept them if you have pets. Commercial lodging may be an option as well. The type of lodging varies by hazard. It may be an interior lower room or may be higher ground. Stay where you are until you are told that it is safe by authorities. You may get this information from an NOAA or other battery powered radio, television, or websites. You may have to evacuate outside of the hazard area, such as with friends, family, or a mass care facility. You can find shelters by texting SHELTER and your zip code to 43362 or 4FEMA. If evacuation is likely, be prepared. Have a full tank of gas. Make arrangements for transportation if there is no vehicle available. Have a portable emergency supply kit ready. Take your pets when evacuating. Inform your family contact of the evacuation plan, such as where, when, and the route to be taken. You may need to turn off or unplug appliances or utilities. Follow the authority instruction based on the disaster. Be prepared for any disaster. Prepare your emergency and safety evacuation kits. Practice your plan. Learn and listen to warning system signals. You may consider building a safe room, which is a structurally built room to provide greater protection with many storms. Also, follow authority instructions. Heat waves are prolonged periods of excessive heat, often with excessive humidity. Some weather terms include heat index, which is the temperature that the body feels with the effects of heat and humidity together. It is not the actual temperature. An excessive heat watch is where the conditions are favorable to meet or exceed the heat warning criteria in 24 to 72 hours. A heat advisory is where the heat index values are forecasted to meet the advisory criteria for one to two days with 100 to 105 degree Fahrenheit temperatures in the daytime. An excessive heat warning is where the heat index values are forecasted to meet or exceed criteria for at least two days with temperatures 105 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit during the daytime. Some illness terms include sunburn. Signs of a sunburn include painful, red, warm skin, and blisters. What to do during a sunburn is to stay out of the sun until you are healed Apply cool cloths or have a cool bath on the sunburn areas. Use moisturizing lotion and do not break blisters. Signs of a heat rash include red clusters of small blisters. They look like pimples. What to do during a heat rash is to stay in a cool, dry place, keep the rash dry, and use powder to soothe the rash. Signs of heat cramps include muscular pains or spasms that are usually in the legs or abdomen. It is an early sign of trouble in the heat. What to do during heat cramps is to get to a cooler place, rest in a comfortable position, lightly stretch and massage, and drink electrolyte containing fluid. Do not use salt tablets. Signs of heat exhaustion include cool, moist, pale, ashen or flushed skin, heavy sweating, a fast, weak pulse, muscle cramps, headache, nausea, dizziness, weakness, fatigue, and exhaustion. During heat exhaustion, you should get to a cooler place with circulating air. Remove or loosen as much clothing as possible and apply cool wet cloths to the skin. If the person is conscious, they should intake small amounts of cool liquid. If they are not improving or have a change in level of consciousness or vomiting, call 911. A heat stroke usually occurs by ignoring the signs of heat exhaustion. Signs include extremely high body temperature, red skin that is dry or moist, change in the level of consciousness, rapid weak pulse, rapid shallow breathing, headache, dizziness, confusion, vomiting, or seizures. Call 911 immediately. During a heat stroke, you should rapidly cool the body. Immerse up to the neck in cold water or douse with cold water. You may sponge them with ice water towels, frequently rotating the towels. Cover with bags of ice, and rapid cooling methods for 20 minutes or until the condition improves. Be sure to prepare before a heat wave. 
Make sure your home is well insulated. Make sure that your air conditioner is in working condition and you may install awnings, louvers, and drapes. Some things that you may do during a heat wave are to eat small, frequent meals, do not leave pets or children alone in enclosed vehicles, avoid extreme temperature changes, take frequent breaks if working or playing outside, be sure to stop if your heart is pounding, if you're gasping for breath, lightheaded, confused, weak, or become faint. Stay indoors in the cool air. If you do not have air conditioning, find shelter elsewhere during the day, such as the library or movie theater. Be sure to stay hydrated and keep your pets hydrated as well. Avoid alcoholic or sugary beverages as they may dehydrate, dehydrate you. Wear loose-fitting, light clothing. and Wear sunscreen that is broad-spectrum or UVA, UVB protectant. Earthquakes are a sudden, rapid shaking of the earth that is caused by shifting of rock beneath the surface. They may occur without warning at any time, and you may hear a roaring or rumbling sound. Be sure to prepare before earthquakes. Keep heavy, breakable items on lower shelves and on the floor. Most deaths and injuries occur from heavy falling objects or collapsing building materials. Bolt and or brace appliances and or heavy cabinets to the wall. Be sure to anchor your overhead lighting and tall furniture. If you are indoors during an earthquake, drop to the floor and move as little as possible. Get under a sturdy piece of furniture. Doorways are not stronger. Stay away from windows. Protect your head and torso by putting your arms over your head and neck. Be sure to hold on until the shaking stops. Repeat this each time you feel an aftershock. If you are outdoors during an earthquake, protect yourself in a clear area away from buildings, power lines, trees, and street lights. Beware of falling debris. If you are in a vehicle during an earthquake, pull over to a clear location. Do not stop under bridges, overpasses, and power lines. Keep your seatbelt on until shaking stops. Do not get out of the car if a power line falls on it. Thunderstorms are severe if at least one inch diameter hail is produced or 58 mile per hour wind gusts are there. Thunderstorms produce lightning, which kills more people annually than tornadoes or hurricanes. It may even occur 10 miles away from rain. Thunderstorms are very damaging. Heavy rain can cause flash flooding, and high winds can damage homes, trees, and utility poles. Some terms include a severe thunderstorm watch, which is where there is severe weather possible in and near the watch area, or a severe thunderstorm warning, where severe weather is reported or seen on a radar. This means that there is imminent danger to life and property. Prepare beforehand for thunderstorms by keeping trees and shrubbery trimmed, removing damaged branches, and securing any outdoor objects. During a thunderstorm, take shelter and bring your pets inside. Avoid all activities with water, such as a bath, shower, or washing dishes. Avoid windows, doors, and concrete walls. Do not use electronics or corded phones. If you are outside, avoid high ground, water, tall trees, and metal objects. Crouch close to the ground, but do not lie down. If you are in a group, separate to reduce injuries. Avoid picnic shelters, dugouts, and sheds. Instead, try to find a permanent shelter. If you are in a vehicle, exit the roadway, park, and stay in the vehicle with the emergency flashers on. Avoid touching any metal and do not drive through a flooded road. Tornadoes are violent rotating air tunnels, which may or may not be visible as funnel clouds. They can happen anywhere and often accompany thunderstorms. The winds may exceed 300 miles per hour. Signs of a tornado include a dark green colored sky, large dark low-lying clouds, large hail, and a loud roar that sounds like a freight train. Terms include tornado watch, which is a tornado is possible because the weather conditions are favorable, or tornado warning, where the tornado funnel has been seen or is on radar. Seek shelter as soon as possible. Be prepared before a tornado strikes. Check with professionals to strengthen, reinforce, and secure your home. Remove any damaged limbs on trees. Remove any loose items or debris in the yard. Secure large and heavy items in your home. 
During a tornado, seek shelter, but not in a mobile home. Bring your pets inside. While inside, stay away from windows and go to the interior lower level of your home and get under something sturdy. If you are outside, try to find shelter. If there is none, lie flat in a ditch, ravine, or culvert. Cover your head and neck. If you are in a vehicle, try to drive to a shelter if the tornado is not seen. Avoid bridges and overpasses. If there are strong winds and flying debris, pull over and park. Keep your seatbelt on and your head down and covered. A flood is a temporary overflow of water, which may be small or large in amount. It can happen slowly or quickly. There are many causes of floods, including heavy rains, the melting of snow, coastal storms, and waterway overflows. Some terms include a flood or flash flood watch, where the conditions are favorable for a flood, or a flood or flash flood warning, where a flood is already occurring or will soon. You should take immediate precautions. Prepare beforehand by obtaining flood insurance if you live in a flood plain. Elevate and reinforce your home and appliances. Seal all basement walls and install a sump pump. During a flood, create sandbag walls where they are needed. Be sure to take your pets with you. Turn off any utilities if instructed by authorities. Move livestock to higher ground. Avoid any contact with flood water. If you are on a flooded road, get out of the car and move to higher ground. Do not try to drive through the water. After a flood, do not use any appliances that were flooded until they are checked for safety by a professional. Pump any flooded basements gradually. If you do too much too soon, the walls could collapse from water-saturated soil. Be sure to service any damaged septic tanks. Winter storms are where there is a large amount of precipitation combined with low temperatures that turn sleet to snow or rain to ice. There may be freezing rain and ice or large amounts of snowfall. It can cause power outages for several days. Weather terms include freezing rain, where the rain freezes when it hits the ground, creating a coat of ice. Sleet is where rain turns to ice pellets before hitting the ground and can create moisture on the roads that can freeze. The wind chill temperature is how cold the wind feels on exposed skin. With a winter weather advisory, the conditions are expected to cause significant inconveniences, may be hazardous, but not life-threatening if you are cautious. With a winter storm watch, the conditions are possible within 36 to 48 hours. In a blizzard warning, there are sustained winds or gusts 35 miles per hour or greater, large amounts of falling or blowing snow, and visibility less than a quarter mile, expected to last three or more hours. A frost or freeze warning is where there are below freezing temperatures expected. A winter storm warning, there are life-threatening, severe winter conditions now or starting within 24 hours. With a winter storm outlook, the conditions are possible within two to five days. Cold-related emergency terms include frostbite, which is a freezing of body parts, including fingers, toes, nose, and earlobes. Signs of frostbite include lack of feeling, Skin is waxy and cold to touch or discolored. If you have frostbite, you should move to a warm place. Do not rub the area. Warm gently in warm water until your skin is red and warm. Loosely bandage the area with dry, sterile dressing. If it's your fingers or toes, place dry, sterile gauze between them. Avoid breaking any blisters. Do not allow the skin to refreeze. And seek medical care as soon as possible. Hypothermia is the cooling of body caused by failure of the body's warming system. Goals are to restore normal body temperature and provide care while waiting for medical help. Signs of hypothermia include shivering, numbness, weakness, glassy stare, apathy, impaired judgment, and loss of consciousness. If someone has hypothermia, call 911. Gently move them to a warm place. Monitor their breathing and circulation. Provide CPR if needed. Remove any wet clothing to dry the person. Warm them slowly by wrapping them in blankets and putting on dry clothing. You may use hot water bottles or chemical hot pads if they are first wrapped in a towel or blanket, but do not warm them too quickly. Warm the trunk and abdomen before hands and feet. Prepare for a winter storm beforehand by winterizing your vehicle, keeping your gas tank full, 
getting new car tires if they are needed, making sure your home is properly insulated, making sure your furnace is in good working order, if you have a wood burning fireplace, making sure you have enough firewood and that your fireplace is vented. Make sure that you have working carbon monoxide detectors in your home as well. During a winter storm, stay indoors with your pets. Be sure to provide shelter for any livestock. Conserve fuel. You may lower your thermostat and layer your clothing. Close vents to any unused rooms and shut doors. Use space heaters with caution. Do not use them on or near furniture. And use ones that have an automatic shutoff switch. Do not leave them unattended. Keep warm and dry. If you are shoveling, change wet clothing frequently. Dress warm with layers. Drink warm fluids. Stay active. Take frequent breaks and get out of the cold if you have any symptoms. Avoid overexertion. Take breaks while shoveling. Prevent pipes from freezing. Leave your faucets dripping. Keep indoors warm. Open your cabinet doors. If they freeze, thaw them slowly with warm air from a hair dryer. Do not use your stove for a heating source as this is unsafe. Do not use a generator, grill, camp stove, or other gas or charcoal devices indoors as this can lead to carbon monoxide poisoning. Be safe during your travels. If you are stranded, do not leave your vehicle unless help is visible within 100 yards. Hang cloths from your antenna. Run your engine occasionally to keep warm, but make sure that your exhaust pipe is clear of snow. Do light exercising to keep your circulation moving. If there is more than one person, huddle for warmth and take turns sleeping. Prepare beforehand for power outages by storing one or two liter bottles of frozen water in the refrigerator and freezer. Place appliance thermometers in the refrigerator. You may purchase coolers to store food if needed. Make sure you have a full tank of gas in your vehicle. Consider a generator for power backup. If there is a possibility of power outage, unplug electronics and appliances. During a power outage, use flashlights, not candles, as this is a fire hazard. Keep your refrigerator and freezer doors closed to keep the cold in. An unopened fridge can keep food cold for about 4 hours. An unopened freezer can keep food cold for about 48 hours. Consume perishable food in the fridge first. Check the temperature first and make sure that it is below 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Discard any food exposed to temperatures greater than 41 degrees Fahrenheit for longer than two hours. Stay cool or stay warm depending on what the temperature is outside. You may go to public places for heat or air. You can sit on a covered porch if it is hot in the house and there is a cool breeze outside. Turn off or unplug electronics to prevent damage in the case of a power surge. You may leave one light on so that you know when the power returns. Home fires can create high heat and toxic smoke in a short period of time. This may be less than 30 seconds with a large fire and the flames can engulf in minutes. The room temperature may be 100 degrees at floor level and 600 degrees at eye level. It can scorch your lungs and melt the clothes to the skin. They may make you disoriented and drowsy. Asphyxiation is the leading cause of fire deaths, 3 to 1 compared to burns. To prevent home fires, use flashlights, not candles, during power outages. Replace any exposed wiring, loose plugs, or damaged extension cords. Do not run wiring under rugs or carpet. You may install fire sprinkler systems in your home. Do not leave food cooking on the stove unattended. Keep flammable items away from the stove. Do not disable the smoke alarms while cooking. Properly store all flammable items at least three feet away from anything that gets hot. Take precautions if you are smoking. Smoke outside. Do not smoke in bed, do not smoke while drowsy or medicated, or if anyone in the household is on oxygen. Be sure to douse cigarettes or butts with water and use deep, sturdy ashtrays. Do not overload your outlets. Make sure outlet covers are in place. Keep matches and lighters out of reach of children. Install smoke alarms on every level of the home, inside and outside sleeping areas. You can get alarms with flashing lights both inside and outside the home as well. Test your smoke alarms monthly and change batteries annually and as needed. Replace your smoke alarm units every 8 to 10 years. Take precautions with fireplaces. Do not leave the fire burning unattended and make sure the fire is completely out before leaving or going to bed. Use a fireplace screen. 
keep outdoor grills at least 10 feet away from the home, deck rails, and overhanging branches. If your clothes catch on fire, stop, drop, and roll. Cover your face, roll over and over, back and forth until the flames are out. Running will only cause the flames to burn faster. Cool burned skin with water for three to five minutes and seek medical attention. If the home is on fire, get out and call for help. Do not go back inside for anyone or anything. Tell the firefighters if there are any pets in the home. Do not walk through fire or smoke areas. If the door handle is warm or hot, do not open it. If you must go through the smoke area, stay low to the ground. Call for help if you are trapped. Close the door, place a wet towel under the door, open the window, yell for help, and wave a bright cloth or flashlight. If the fire starts while cooking, cover the pan with a lid and turn off the burner. Leave this until it is completely cool. Do not pour water on grease fires. Hazardous materials and chemicals come in different forms, including explosives, flammable combustible substances, poisons, and radioactive. They may be potentially lethal. Different exposure methods include inhaling, swallowing, and touching. There may be different exposure times, such as during production, storage, transportation, use, and disposal. There are many different hazardous materials and chemicals found in the home, including cleaning products, pesticides, automotive products, batteries, hairspray, aerosol deodorants, nail polish, and kerosene. The exposure may be intentional or unintentional. Take extreme caution around hazardous materials and chemicals. Do not mix the chemicals. Be sure to follow all directions. Do not use chemicals near an open flame. Be sure to store chemicals properly in tightly closed original containers. Do not store them in food containers. Clean up any spills immediately, making sure that you protect your skin, eyes, mouth, and nose. Dispose of chemicals properly. Some can be taken to the local hazardous waste facility. If there is a chemical spill or possible exposure to any hazardous materials, be sure to bring your pets and family indoors. Avoid the chemicals. Leave the area without passing through the contamination. Seal the room by shutting doors, windows, vents, and fireplace dampers. Turn off the attic fans, air conditioning, furnace, and ventilation. Seal any gaps around the doors, windows, and vents. Decontaminate if exposed by following the decontamination instructions. Remove the clothing, cutting off anything that needs to go over the head. Put the contaminated clothing in a sealed bag. Remove glasses or contacts. Wash your hands with soap and water. Flush your eyes with water. Gently wash the face and hair with soap and water and then rinse. Seek medical treatment. Be sure to inform others that you are contaminated. Call 911 or Poison Control at one 800 222 one, two, 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 if anything is ingested. Be sure to follow the directions of the, of the medical personnel. Monitor for symptoms of toxic poisoning, such as difficulty breathing, irritation to eyes, the respiratory system, change in skin color, headache, blurred vision, dizziness, or cramps. If the chemical incident is outside, stay upwind. Do not touch or inhale the chemicals and seek shelter if needed. Bioterrorism is in the form of biological agents. Basic agents include bacteria, viruses, and toxins. They may be naturally occurring, as in the flu, or weaponized, where the agents are modified and deliberately released, as in anthrax. There can be different methods of dispersion, such as spraying in the air, from person to person, infecting animals or insects, and contaminating food and water. It may go undetected for hours, days, or weeks. It may become epidemic, such as spread in many people in the community, or a pandemic outbreak, where it is fast spread in many people throughout the world. They can kill or incapacitate people, animals, and crops. An attack is a deliberate release. There are some ways that you can prepare for bioterrorism or a pandemic. Keep your immunizations up to date, as some agents can be prevented. Install a HEPA filter, as this may filter out most biological agents. Always be sure to practice good hand washing skills. During a bioterrorism incident or pandemic, wear a face mask if needed. 
As far as isolation, you may be advised to avoid crowds or be in quarantine as you may be contagious. Limit the spread of person to person by covering your mouth or nose when coughing or sneezing. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Use gloves if cleaning any body fluids and avoid sharing items. Obtain medication or vaccination if it is indicated and available. Watch for symptoms of the illness. The authorities will provide the list based on the agent. Still, wash your hands frequently with soap and water. After any disaster, follow authority instructions. Provide first aid or CPR if needed. Also call 911 if needed. Take pictures of any damage for insurance purposes. Report any fallen power lines or broken gas lines, although you should leave if you hear a hissing noise or smell gas. Shut off electricity if there is major damage. Look for and extinguish small fires. Check with disaster relief services. If you are trapped, call for help or tap on a pipe or wall, or you may use a whistle. This concludes the presentation. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to your local emergency preparedness division, which may be at your local health department. You may also check out the American Red Cross, CDC, and Department of Homeland Security websites as they have a lot of reference information. Thank you.